So I want to talk about coffee. Uh, hundreds of people across the world message me every single day asking me whether coffee is healthy or unhealthy. Now you see there's nothing really wrong with good quality coffee. Everything's wrong when we have all coffee like frappuccinos filled with whipped cream and different kinds of sugars and high fat milk and all of those things. Or the biggest problem with coffee is when we overdo it, when we have more than three to four cups in a day. Or everything's wrong with coffee when that's the first thing that goes into your system when you wake up in the morning. If you've not had your water, you don't have a piece of fruit and you straight away put coffee into your system, which is already acidic, you have problems. But today, the whole problem with coffee is we need to understand how coffee works in the human body. I think half the world is probably addicted to that coffee because they're addicted to caffeine. Caffeine basically stimulates the adrenal glands to produce adrenaline, which gives us that rush of energy, which keeps us going every single day. Now we have to understand when it comes to a patient who has a thyroid problem, when it comes to someone who has constant stress, when it comes to someone who's constantly fatigued, coffee can be a big problem. When it comes to, when, when it comes to people who have high blood pressure, diabetes as well, all excess coffee can cause more issues than do good. And we're going to understand exactly what happens. Now when you consume coffee, okay, your adrenal glands produce adrenal, adrenaline. Your adrenal glands also produce the stress hormone called cortisol. Cortisol is a stress hormone that we all need. Cortisol is required to regulate your blood pressure, your blood sugar levels, and a whole load of activities in the body, including the response to fight and flight. So it keeps us ready. It keeps us prepared to face any stress that we may face. But the problem is when cortisol is raised for a longer period of time, when cortisol is elevated chronically, that's when we have all of the problems. So now, let's understand what happens the moment you consume coffee, your adrenal glands start stimulating cortisol. So we have that one cup, cortisol is produced, adrenaline is produced, we feel good, and that's where it should end. But as the caffeine comes down in our system and we reach out for the second cup and then again we feel that crash once the caffeine decreases and then the third and the fourth cup or we move from one stimulant to another like coffee, tea, coffee, Red Bull, all these stimulants or snacks which are rich in sugar and salt are also stimulants. What's happening is we're constantly producing cortisol and cortisol goes up and it stays up. It stays chronically elevated. And now when that happens, that's what is really bad for the human body. Whether you're healthy, whether you have a heart problem, whether you have high blood pressure, whether you have a thyroid problem. But today we're specifically gonna talk about people who have thyroid issues. Number one, most people who have thyroid issues, it can be healed. There are very, very few people who may have to live with thyroid medication for a lifetime. But most people out there who are on thyroid medication because they've had poor lifestyles, they've had poor nutrition going into their system, they have poor levels of sleep, and they have elevated levels of stress, or they've been taking tyroxine and medication for years without really changing their lifestyle or getting to the root cause of why they have a thyroid problem in the first case. Over the last two years, we've seen over 16,000 patients heal themselves completely off their thyroid medication in a safe way with their doctors in the loop. Because you see, your thyroid is a gland that has the function of controlling your entire metabolic process in the body by producing TSH, which is the thyroid stimulating hormone. Now, when your gland is underactive and can no longer produce this, the whole idea is medicine is not your answer all the time. Maybe for a temporary period while you change your lifestyle, but it is possible for the human body to heal the thyroid gland so that it can start producing thyroxine automatically and naturally again. But most of us don't, most of us don't change our lifestyles and that's why the gland doesn't repair and that's why doctors say you need to be on thyroxine for the rest of your life. Now, like I said, there are, a, there are a couple of people who may need this for the rest of their life, but in most cases, it can be corrected when we look at the root cause and address the root cause. So, what are some of the other symptoms when we have elevated levels of cortisol? Now, remember, cortisol is good. Goes up, we, it does the job, comes down. When it goes up and stays up, that's the problem. High blood pressure, chronic fatigue. There are so many people who wake up tired every single day and they go through an entire day of fatigue. And that's why they reach out for coffee after coffee, tea after tea, stimulant after stimulant. That is a symptom of high cortisol levels in your body. Then you have people with migraines, people with insomnia and sleep problems, people with acidity, chronic acidity, people with chronic hunger, hunger cravings all the time, arthritis, inflammatory problems like arthritis and low immunity. These are all signs 
that your adrenal glands are producing more cortisol than the body requires. Now let's understand this very, very clearly. When your body goes through stress, chronic stress, it could be emotional, it could be physical, it could be mental, it could be all of these kinds of stress, and your stress goes up and stays up, your TSH, which is your thyroid stimulating hormone, comes down. Now you've got to remember this very clearly. Cortisol goes up and stays up, TSH starts coming down, and that's the problem in all thyroid patients. They're not producing enough of thyroxine. The link between your cortisol stress and your thyroid gland is directly, directly connected with each other. Now, there are three other things that go on in your body. When your cortisol goes up and stays up, your blood pressure automatically goes up and stays up. Now, no amount of blood pressure pills or medication will ever heal you unless you address the root cause, which is possibly stress for most people. The blood pressure drug may be necessary for you because you're leading a very stressful life and elevated high blood pressure isn't good for your heart or your kidneys. But you need to understand that it is only making your numbers look good on your papers. You are not address addressing the root cause. So every time you're more and more stressed, your dosage of your high blood pressure medication goes higher and higher. The third thing that happens when your cortisol goes up, it impacts your blood sugar levels. So this is extremely bad for pre-diabetics, for people with diabetes, and people who are suffering, for, suffering from kidney disease as well. Because you see, elevated cortisol increases the, amount, the, the number of inflammatory cytokines in your body. And this changes, this changes how insulin works with the cells in your body. So that's insulin insensitivity, where your body's producing insulin, but your cells are not accepting it. So think of insulin as knocking on your cell dough, but the cell doughs are not opening up for it to put the blood sugar in it. And that's why we have ele elevated levels of blood sugar level in the blood. Again, related to inflammation, again, related to chronic cortisol levels created by chronic stress. And the fourth thing is it's bad for your immunity. And we all know that when we're sick, Okay, we fall sick, our immunity is low when we're stressed. Anyone who's stressed falls sick because their immunity is compromised. So you, th you see what happens is this one hormone cortisol is impacting several other hormones in your body. Your insulin, your blood markers, your thyroid, everything. So now I want you to think of a car going downhill. Okay, if the car doesn't have brakes, the car gathers more and more speed and finally crashes and the impact's going to be heavy. But if you're going downhill and you apply the brakes, okay, the, the car slows down. Now move that, move that analogy to your life. If your life is moving too fast, the body tries to slow you down by applying brakes. It slows down the production of thyroxine because that slows down your metabolism and slows you down. So it is so important for you to understand that when you're chronically stressed, when you're moving too fast through life, moving from one thing to another and you don't have enough of recovery time in terms of rest periods, in time of your sleep at night, your body will automatically slow down the production of thyroxine. And here you are taking more and more synthetic thyroxine, hoping that you're going to fix the problem, but you will never fix the problem. And you will need that medicine for your lifetime because your body is naturally slowing down production of thyroxine to slow down your metabolic rate, to slow you down before you crash. And that's the reason why people struggle to lose weight, even if they're on thyroxine and thyroid medication. Because your body, you're fighting the intelligence of your body. You're stressed, you're not sleeping enough, you're moving from one thing to another, and your body's natural defense mechanism is reduce the amount of thyroxine. And that's why you see your dosage keeps on increasing. The more stress you have, your TSH levels, your T3, T4, everything's all over the place, and your doctor increases your dosage. And none of that's really helping you because you've not got to the root cause, which is stress. So that the same thing comes to overtraining. If you've had four to five hours of sleep and then you work out one hour in the gym, you're working out a body which is already tired and stressed out and you're adding more stress to it. Your body further slows down the production of thyroxine in your system. So coming back to coffee, one cup, great. Two cups, fine. Three cups, that's when you know that you're using a stimulant to keep you energized and awake throughout the day. That's not going to help you in the long run. What's going to help you in the long run is going and revisiting your sleep cycles. Am I sleeping enough? Am I recovering enough? Am I working out too hard? Fine, work out hard. But are you recovering too? Are you, are you not recovering enough to justify the kind of workout that you're doing? There are people who train and wake up at 5 in the morning to run a marathon and they train and they sleep for 3 hours and they don't do carb loading. So that's all negative stress building up in the body. Elevated cortisol, reduction in thyroxine, 
negative damage to your muscles, to your cells, inflammation increase, and the slowing down of your metabolic process. That's why you see people who work out so hard in the gyms, they train so hard, they run so much, they take protein shakes, they take supplements, they eat organic salads, but yet they never seem to lose the abdominal fat, the belly fat, the side fat that they carry. That's because that is cortisol-related fat. That is stress-induced fat from overtraining and under-recovery. Your thyroid gland stops producing thyroxine to slow you down naturally. When you go back to evolution, okay, as the winter set in, the body automatically started slowing down the thyroid gland so that you would gain weight, you would gain body fat to keep you warm throughout the winter. But that was, that's, that, that, that's what happened years and years and decades ago in evolution. Our genes and our cells haven't changed much, which is why it's so important for you to understand. In the cold season, vitamin D3 is so important because if you don't have the le right levels of vitamin D3, it signals to your thyroid gland to reduce the production of thyroxine so that you gain weight to protect you from the cold of winter. So the takeaway is if you are a thyroid patient and you are overdoing it on coffee, you need to make that lifestyle change right now. You have to, because anyway, people drink coffee the wrong way. They have coffee on an empty stomach. They have too much of coffee and their water intake is less. You need to understand that coffee works like a diuretic in the system. It flushes out, flushes out water from your kidneys. And with that, excessive coffee will also flush out magnesium, a whole load of vitamins, nutrients, and electrolytes. So now you're actually depleted of vitamins and nutrients that your body needs. And that's why we have hunger cravings. That's why we feel more and more tired with coffee. And that's why we feel sluggish and lethargic. So if you're drinking coffee, drink it the right way. One cup of coffee, you've got to replenish it with two cups of water to keep your electrolyte balance fine and your hydration levels good. But again, I repeat, if you're trying to heal from thyroid, you want to keep your coffee intake at the lowest. You want to keep your training at the lowest. You don't want to be overtraining. You don't want to be having all of these problems. And then your body automatically reduces the production of thyroxine. So you see it's all possible when you get to the root cause of why you still have a disease or a condition. The body is always giving you biofeedback and signals as to what is wrong. You just got to make these lifestyle changes and you can begin the process of healing. So coffee is good for us. It's good for people who have Alzheimer's. It's good for people to prevent Alzheimer's. It's good for our brain, it's good for a whole lot of things unless we start overdoing it. So we don't overdo even the good things or the bad things. We draw that balance and that balance could be different for everyone. For example, for me, if I have a coffee after 11 in the morning, it affects my sleep at night. So that's my threshold. I need to have coffee early in the morning if I'm choosing to have it. Everyone has a different threshold. Just because you can sleep after having your coffee doesn't mean your body's used to coffee. Your adrenal glands are still producing cortisol. And that's a big condition that we have today in the world, AFS, adrenal fatigue syndrome. We have so much of coffee and stimulants or we're so stressed that the adrenal glands after some point can't even produce the right amount of cortisol. And that also has the side effects of high blood pressure, high blood sugar levels, low immunity, and a whole disruption of hormones in the human body. Have a good day, everyone. Until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right, and breathe deep.